arthritis? Really, osteoarthritis is, in fact, a little difficult to define. Essentially, the first changes are in the car cartilage itself. We believe usually due to biochemical abnormalities that can occur for a number of reasons. Things such as injury to the cartilage, metabolic change that the metabolism of the cartilage is somehow altered, that the ligaments which support a joint such as the knee are injured, lax, what have you, or finally that the muscles, the thigh muscles, usually the quadriceps muscles that support the knee are weakened and don't therefore give enough support to the knee. Any of these things can lead to osteoarthritis. The cartilage itself is a relatively simple uh, organ. It's uh, at the end of the bones. It's, it's the where the action really occurs in the joint, and there's really only three substances other than water. There are cells, which are called chondrocytes, and then two main substances, a ropey substance called collagen that gives it strength, and a goopy substance which gives it elasticity and shock absorber power called proteoglycan. Now, if any of these are damaged, then you've got the first beginnings of an arthritis. The problem, of course, is that in the adult, the human adult, cartilage can't be repaired, so that once you get damage, very quickly, you're on the road towards a clinical problem. Now, early osteoarthritis, as opposed to osteoarthritis in general, is a little hard to define. Generally, we use an x-ray to confirm osteoarthritis, but if the x-ray is done with the person lying on an x-ray table, probably 75% is missed. And if it's done standing, 40% is missed. So that when you do more sophisticated analyses with, say, uh, magnetic resonance imaging, or MR, that you will find a lot more early cartilage change. One of the most exciting things is that we now think there are ways that we can start to look at the biochemistry itself while having the person, well, leaving the person intact, not having to take some tissue out. And one of the most exciting things currently is that we have new techniques that we believe will allow us to actually look at the biochemistry, what's happening in the cartilage with the person on a table using very fancy uh, x-ray techniques. Thus we could look at is the ropey collagen intact, is the goopy shock absorbing proteoglycan intact. There are a number of factors that relate to causing osteoarthritis of the knee. The most important that's modifiable is being overweight or worse still obese. If you are, then the risk of osteoarthritis of the knee increases probably at least fourfold. That's 400%. If you are in the very highest level of obesity, it's even higher than that, and you may have an 800% increase in the risk of knee osteoarthritis. Other things that are related to developing osteoarthritis of the knee uh, a sedentary lifestyle. So not being very active, not getting a lot of exercise is not a great thing. Previous knee injury is another factor. So things such as a ACL tear or major knee injury is linked to future down the road osteoarthritis. The other uh, big factor is previous knee surgery so that we know that having your meniscus removed increases the risk, say, 20 or 30 years down the road of getting osteoarthritis. Then there are a number of factors that we can't do much about. One is age. As we age, the risk of osteoarthritis seems to increase. Being born a woman doubles your risk of osteoarthritis in comparison to being a man. Genetics do appear to be very important and may relate to about 50% of it. So a big family history of osteoarthritis of the knee is not a good thing, but what can you do about it? And finally, if you've got osteoarthritis in one knee, you're at higher risk of getting it 
in the other. So how do we diagnose early osteoarthritis? And there is, I'm afraid, no good answer for that. But we do have some new research data that I think is rather relevant. In the past, osteoarthritis was diagnosed when someone presented to their doctor with knee pain. Now, Dr. Yolanda Siebert at the University of British Columbia has conducted the only population-based study of people with knee pain where all of the individuals have had an MRI, so a very sophisticated way of diagnosing osteoarthritis. What she has shown is that people with relatively minor, mild knee pain have a very high likelihood of having osteoarthritis detected on the MRI. Half of the people, more than half of these people, don't have x-ray changes, even with sophisticated x-ray techniques, meaning that we're missing a lot of osteoarthritis when we rely on someone coming into the doctor's office with pain and having an abnormal x-ray. Another aspect that Dr. Siebert has done that I think is rather intriguing is she's looked at what are the findings when a doctor examines a knee that make it likely that in fact this isn't irrelevant knee pain, but it's likely significant knee pain, meaning that there's early osteoarthritis. And the findings that she's come up with include that there's a grating feeling when the doctor moves the knee, that the knee is swollen, that there's fluid in it, that there is an abnormal gait, that you may have a limp or that your gait is a little imperfect. And finally, that the muscles around the knee are weaker, that one of the things that will happen when you start to get osteoarthritis and knee pain is that your muscles become weaker. Finally, the most exciting thing that she has done and is not really used yet in the clinic is working with scientists in Canada, in the US, in Europe, in Scandinavia. She has detected that certain blood markers can be used to diagnose osteoarthritis very early. In fact, when the x-rays are normal, but there is minor cartilage change on an MRI. These markers are called biomarkers, and they're detected in minuscule amounts in the blood and urine, and are a very exciting area for research, and may well be uh, something that we see a lot of in the future, that your doctor will just get a blood sample and say, yes, it does look like you might be developing osteoarthritis. A final th bit of research that's rather uh, intriguing and fun is uh, Dr. Carlo Mara, a, a faculty member at UBC in the uh, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, noted that we all go and see our pharmacist about five to eight times more often than we see our doctor. And with a very simple questionnaire, he was able to have pharmacists diagnose osteoarthritis of the knee when people drop by for, say, to pick up some Advil or some Tylenol. So this may be another way of getting people into the system early by having pharmacists suggest that there may be something more important going on in the knee than just an ache and a pain. So why is it difficult to diagnose osteoarthritis? Well, there are a number of relatively simple reasons for this. We know that about a quarter of people, 25% of those over age 55, have knee pain. But only one in six of those people with knee pain ever go to their doctor. That's the first problem. If you don't go in when you start developing the symptoms, we're not going to be able to diagnose you early on. Secondly, many people, and I'm afraid many doctors as well, believe that knee pain is part of normal aging. And what Dr. Sipir's research has shown is that clearly it isn't. It's nothing to do with aging, as we don't all get osteoarthritis of the knee. This is a, a thought process that we're going to have to change. Knee pain is not normal. 
So what's going wrong? Well, the public doesn't recognize that knee pain is important. When they do go to their doctor, there's unfortunately research showing the doctor doesn't make the diagnosis in a timely manner, and finally, often doesn't start treatment that's likely to make a difference long term. So why is it important to diagnose osteoarthritis of the knee early? First, we know that for almost every condition, early diagnosis means better outcomes. No one would advise diagnosing heart disease late, cancer late, or rheumatoid arthritis late. In all those conditions, we know that early diagnosis is the key to altering outcome. Now, that does appear to be true in osteoarthritis as well. Dr. Mara, who I mentioned earlier, has in fact done a study showing that when you get individuals early, picking them up in a pharmacy, years before they're diagnosed by their physician, in fact, they're very likely to adapt changes that are going to lead to better outcomes. This is exciting news and supports the early diagnosis. What happens if you don't diagnose it early? Well, the pain becomes worse. This often leads to fatigue, physical disability, and decreased physical activity. Finally, of course, you start to gain weight so that you're actually aggravating a condition and developing, uh, developing problems such as physical activity and obesity that are going to be difficult to tackle. <laughs> so what can someone do if they have been diagnosed as having early osteoarthritis? What can they do themselves to make a difference in the long-term outcome? There are two big things. One is exercise, that, as I mentioned, one of the early changes on the physical exam is muscle weakness. Now, developing stronger quadriceps and muscles of the thigh, which stabilize the knee, is essential. What sort of exercise should you do? I realize that exercise specialists have all sorts of preferences. My own preference is just get out there and exercise, whether you do low impact aerobics, whether you do swimming, whether you work out in the gym, whether you do quadriceps exercises on machines, it's all the same to me. I do think that water exercises are probably the easiest when you have a lot of pain, as the water takes the pressure off the knee and allows you to strengthen the muscles. So what sort of water exercises? It doesn't matter. Swimming, water aerobics, even just walking in the shallow end of a pool is fine. Any of those will help counteract osteoarthritis and I believe will actually prevent damage down the road. The second aspect that has to be combated is obesity and being overweight undoubtedly contributes not only to the cause of osteoarthritis but it looks like small amounts of weight loss can change the progression so losing 10 to even 15 pounds can reduce your chance of being worse several years down the road these are things we all can tackle on our own <laughs>